How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. I'm here and a lot to talk about today. Last week, we spoke about CM Punk. And you know what? There's a lot more to talk about. There's more AEW to talk about, obviously, because the show is the Saturday show is very interesting. Uh, how they're going to plan this, how they're going to do this. I'm very intrigued by this. I know a lot of you are, so we're going to break that down a little bit more. I have some more detail on this. Rampage was last night on Saturday. It was actually a pretty good Rampage. I, I very much like the John Moxley stuff. He's out of his mind. SmackDown on Friday, we'll talk about that. Stardom All-Star Grand Queendom results all over my timeline this morning. That's all I saw. It's interesting, you know, like sometimes things shift and, and you know, if if Mercedes was not on that stardom show, would there be as much buzz? Because you know what? Even without Mercedes, it was a great show. Uh, very interesting stuff here. Also, we're going to have some fun in the last segment. I'm going to bring in my producer, MG Geek. We'll talk about some older wrestling stuff. I'm always curious what people, what, what it was that got them into professional wrestling the way we consume it, right? It's easy to get into it when you're, you know, a kid and you're watching this crazy thing on TV and it stands out for you. But, you know, there's, there's something that kept us here. I want to I wanna find out. I want to find out what it is for you because I'll tell you guys what it is for me. But we have all this and a whole lot more, obviously, to talk about. Very interesting this summer. Even the stuff I'm hearing regarding what WWE's planning and then what they're going to be doing moving forward with Brock Lesnar and Cody and Roman... Very interesting stuff. Going to go to a quick break. We're going to come back with a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian here. Sunday edition of the show. Hey, guys. Little quick reminder. The convention is coming up. You're going to be in Las Vegas for double or nothing. I know a lot of you guys are. A lot of you girls are. Come join the convention. It's always a blast. I was there last year. It was a great time. Memorial Day weekend. You can get more information at F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. That's F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. Meet and greet opportunity, sweet party, Q&A session, dinner, and a whole lot more. F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. You know, Double or Nothing is going to probably be the beginning of this uh of the story being told here and well the story is the return of cm punk last week we spoke about this for multiple segments and you know the the feedback because i asked for feedback for this right because i want to know what you guys are thinking the feedback is really interesting and there's two or three there's two different perspectives i'm seeing one is the emotional perspective of this guy should not be there. What he did was totally inappropriate. And just you're, you're creating a, a bad environment and you're setting a bad example by bringing him back after the outburst that he had. The other perspective is, hey, listen, it's a contract year. It's a, it's a, it's a business Tony's running. He needs the most eyeballs. He needs to have the most bang, bang right now. You ha you should bring him back if you're if if it's if it's doable. I think a little bit more people are siding with the do it if you can side at this point. But you know this is going to be a really interesting moment. You know, does this happen again? The, the, or or are they able to coexist? Are they able to coexist in the world of professional wrestling? But let's go into this. On Friday, I put out, and I believe Dave also put it in the Observer, we, uh, we timed this perfectly, that the first AEW Collision show, as of today, as of April 23rd, will take place at the United Center on June 17th. The last time CM Punk debuted, obviously, was a rampage that they ran at the United Center. It was a sellout. That building was packed. They also have Dynamite scheduled at Wintrust Arena on the 21st. That the ticket sales have been a little eh right now. But I think with the Punk announcement, that's going to change a lot of that. You know, this is 
you got a Saturday show. You got a, 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 a I'm using hand quotes for people listening. I'm an A1 tier Saturday show. Think of it more like how Raw and SmackDown are presented. Some people are on that brand. Some people are able to go back and forth. Obviously, CM Punk. Uh, I, as far as I understood, because I got this question a ton this week, I see CM Punk only on Saturdays. I don't believe that's, that's the case. I don't believe CM Punk is only on Saturdays. I believe he will be going back and forth. Uh, but it will most likely be weeks that the Bucks aren't on Dynamite or Kenny's not on Dynamite. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I am hopeful that these guys are all going to make this work. I am hopeful. Whether or not they do, I don't know. I know that uh, I can say that there has been no conversations between the Bucks and CM Punk. There's been no, uh, I know that there there possibly been attempted conversations with Kenny. I don't know whether or not they did actually talk or or it was, you know, it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it didn't happen. But I know that there was a possibility and I know for a fact that CM Punk and Tony are talking, obviously. I also don't know if that meeting took place with Chris Jericho, CM Punk and, and FTR. I don't know if, and Tony, I don't know if that happened already. I would imagine if it's not, if it hasn't happened, it's happening very soon. But this is very interesting. June 17th at the United Center. This will most likely be announced at Upfronts on May 17th. Is that the date, MG? My uh, star-studded production team here. Thank you. Star-studded. Someone fell asleep during that, during the uh, stardom show. I found out right before the show. Was that you, MG? Did you fall it asleep long, during it? Was it? A long, it was a long night. <laughs> it <laughs> was. <laughs> I kind of know what you mean. It was a long <laughs> night. You could hear it in my, you could hear it in my voice today. I had a long night too. Um, but guys, listen, very interesting stuff. You know, we're talking about this and I'm, I, I say this all the time, you know, this whole CM Punk thing, it, it did take a lot out of me. Uh, I was I was bummed out by this because you invest your time in talking about it. You you love the bit, you know, you love the product and you're seeing wrestling changing for the good on all fronts. Obviously, the WWE side has been doing great business, too, which I'm going to talk about because I thought SmackDown was a fun show. But when you hear that stuff like this happens, it's so beyond unnecessary and if they can make it work, you kind of want to see it happen. Now, this this opens up a lot of interesting things like, okay, you got the Saturday show. You also have guys like 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 Miro that are nowhere to be found. You have Andrade that's hurt, but they weren't really utilizing him in a great way. You have amazing talent like Roosh that really isn't on isn't doing much on Dynamite. And the list goes on and on. And and I don't think this is a a Tony Khan is not booking these guys for a reason. No, I just think that th there's so many moving parts that sometimes you just get lost if it's not this great I grand idea being presented to you. Now you have more of an opportunity. I'm not against the Saturday show. Let me just say that. I think a lot of people, uh, I don't know for whatever reason, people assume that I, d I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's a really good idea. One, the money. We don't know how much they're getting, but I, I do, I can tell you they are going to get money for this. You are in a contract year. You're most likely negotiating for something. This roots you even deeper in the Warner Discovery family. And you're also trying to create, and here's the other side of this, okay? This HBO thing is very interesting to me. This Max discovery product they're rebranding it they're gonna have some live sports on there i believe they did right they did they put on a, a soccer game am i wrong mg i can look it up but yeah i believe they're doing u.s uh women's soccer on football f-u-t-b-o-l <laughs> the other football uh i you know these are all things they need to work out uh, the BR Live concept is really weird. It do it doesn't really do much. Um, AW also has to create some sort of large library. You know, you wanna you wanna be able to make some money with this. 
uh, for, for Warner, right? You want, to, you want the watch hours on the product. You know, you got three years of content for one show. You have your Ring of Honor archives. That's 20-something years old. That's your legacy product. Uh, you now are now adding another two hours. You have Rampage. You need a home for Dark Elevation and, Eleva and, and AW Dark and everything else that you're doing. So this is all being built together. This all makes sense when you look at the grand picture of what the end goal to compete is. You're running house shows now. You're running a Saturday show. You got a pay-per-view six times a year, maybe more. You got dynamite. You got all, you know, you, you have to organize this. And I think adding another two hours to get guys like Miro and Andrade and Alistair, you know, put him in singles, put Buddy Matthews in some singles and build him as a single. Uh, there, there's so many names that I could tell you. You're going you're gonna to need another show, especially if you're trying to elevate some new talent. Swerve Strickland, right? Swerve. He's a top-tier guy, in my opinion. You don't have too many opportunities to do this on Dynamite if you're, if you're doing a lot. As my phone goes off, because I'm very unprofessional here. My, my apologies. I think for Swerve, guys like Swerve, this is fantastic. You're not relegated to a, to a 10 p.m. time slot to get over with a national audience. Now you have an 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. primetime time slot. On a rough day, Saturdays are not easy, but you have the, the, the option to present this now. I don't see that as a negative. The only negative I could see is if Tony gets burnt out. And that is not good. I want to pick it up where we left off in the next segment. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. You know, when I was on break, our, uh, our other producer, John here, he's not, and this is, this is interesting, right? So like John's, and, and I love these perspectives. John is not a wrestling fan. John watched it when he was like a little kid. And his real first uh, wrestling experience to do this was all out in Chicago two years ago. He came and he absolutely had a blast. He couldn't believe how awesome it was. So he has a very unique observation when it comes to pro wrestling. He also produces uh, Wrestling Observer during the week. So, John, ask the question you asked during the break because I, I, I'll, I'll break it down a little bit because I, I love to get the perspective of a non you know, even beyond the casual fan, right? You don't watch casually. You you actually do it backwards. The way you consume media is through the podcast, and then you see it a little bit on the show, uh, on TV. So what was the question you asked? So I've been, like, listening to all these shows, Brian and you talk about CM Punk returning or possibly returning for, like, the past two months now. Yeah. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, so it sounds to me like Tony Khan and AEW need – CM Punk to be on AEW for the show to survive. But then what can Tony Khan actually do to build somebody that has the same gravitas and would provide the same boost as CM Punk without CM Punk? You know, that is, and that's why I, I wanted you to ask that question because that is, the, that is the golden question, right? How do you create the star? How do you create the star? Not a star, but the star. Um, I think for Tony, he has a lot of young guys that will become big stars in pro wrestling. MJF is one of those, right? MJF is already a big star in wrestling. When I went to Spark Steakhouse this week, okay? I'm sitting at the bar there. I'm talking to the bartender. It's an old school steakhouse in New York. The big story about Spark, uh, Spark Steak, Steakhouse, you could Google it. Something happened in the 80s over there. Uh I'm sitting at the bar and I was talking to somebody and somebody brought up wrestling, obviously, and we're having a conversation and this guy comes over and he goes, hey, do you watch AEW? He, obviously, he doesn't know me. I'm like, yeah, I do. He goes, uh, he's like, yeah, you know who was here? MJF. And he brought the title belt and he put it on the on the bar and it was like a big deal. You know what? When when the bartender's coming over and talking about that, that that is a big deal. That is cool to see. MJF is a star. Is he a star at CM Punk's level? He could be for sure. Hangman Page, is he a star? Could he be a star 
on a Bret Hart level. I'm just I'm throwing a comparison. I don't know why. Maybe the cowboy thing. I see a little Bret Hart in him. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, this is my point though: is that they could do this. They could do it, but they don't. Yeah. They're still relying on so, all this talk for the past like three months of CM Punk. Because your point is why 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 would you why would you want to bring him in unless you need him? I think it's ne- it's necessary for the business today. It, for short term thinking, I think it's important to have him. Long term wise, listen, he's forty four years old. How many more years is he going to be effective in the ring? How many more years does he want to do it? Uh, there's also buzz around him. And when there's buzz, you kind of want that person. I, I don't think he's a long-term, uh, he's a long-term investment for them. Definitely. Not. I, I think this is a, this is a business decision where you're in a key business year. And listen, you know, we, we know that AEW was getting a second show, right? We, we've been talking about that for months now, even before the CM Punk stuff. When I reported this and, and here's a narrative out there that I I'm I'm going to try to debunk but I'm also going to say I maybe maybe I'm wrong here when I was initially told about collision I was never told it was a CM Punk thing CM Punk never even came up uh Warner Media had no clue about the CM Punk conversation at that point it was presented in a way that it was another show that could be an hour uh on Saturdays that will highlight more talent That's why I brought up guys like Miro, and that's why I brought up Roosh and and everybody else. It's not getting presented in a in a in a great way on on uh, on Dynamite and even on Rampage. Now you have a unique opportunity to capture a very different audience on a Saturday early evening. That obviously changed, and it would not have changed if CM Punk was not in the conversation. So, at the end of the day, how effective is CM Punk? Well, CM Punk possibly got you another hour of content to be paid for. So, you know, it's a very unique conversation. And the other thing is, you know, guys like MJF and Hangman Page do not have that WWE crossover. They, they, they weren't there. They didn't become their world champion. They didn't become a big star in that company. I, I, you know, that goes, that goes a long way. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. You know, when AEW started grabbing a lot of the WWE guys, the complaints started, well, why do you want to get, well, it's becoming like TNA. Well, you need to, you need established stars on your TV. Listen, man, I could watch the Young Bucks all day and all night. I could watch Kenny Omega all day and all night. Those are big tier stars in pro wrestling, but you I don't have many of those. You. Yeah, give me. So, so you remember when um, the NBA followed uh, T and uh, was it um, Dynamite or Rampage? The NBA followed Jericho yeah, was no, on. Dynamite. Dynamite Chris followed. Jer- Dynamite followed the NBA, and Chris Jericho was in the opening segment, and everybody lost right. their minds. And and there was so much crossover. It was it was in a it was kind of negative, but it wasn't. It was crossover appeal. Like, wait, he still wrestles type thing. So that does matter. Getting you know those those names going i didn't know they still did it i heard someone say that about jeff hardy this week jeff hardy's another one russell's yeah yeah jeff hardy's another Mm -hmm. one so So, you need you need a little bit of that the only trouble mm -hmm. that you get in as a promotion is if you are your emphasis is exclusively on guys that are in their late 40s that were big stars in wwe that are that aren't really you're not doing a good job to build your future talent you know aw is doing a good job to to build their future talent and to their and they're getting criticized for it. Some uh, you know the the four pillars match. People are criticizing that concept. You know where's the big star in there? Obviously they're gonna they're they're trying to create the next big star. They need another young guy like Max. So I I I, I know I know this went longer, but I think it's an important conversation to have. You need a mix, and I think CM Punk does help them today. Will he help him next year? That. I don't know. But this is the crux of the matter. It is. It is. And it's very, it's so, this stuff is so fascinating to me. Here's the other part, okay? And, and a lot of people are overlooking, and I say this about WWE constantly. When, when you are seeing what you're seeing on TV, there's more to it than just booking a really good story and a good match. You're also booking the future for merch sales, video game sales, and every other thing that they do. AEW, what do they have coming up? They got a video game coming up that has to do good for them. 
I'm not saying great. I'm not expecting this to do great for them, but it has to do good for them, this first game. You need to be able to draw as much eyeballs as possible to promote this video game. You also have toys you got to sell. You got merch you got to sell. These are all factors that come into play here. You know, with the timing of this, you're now running, you're running a pay-per-view in a couple of weeks, in a month, right? You got double or nothing in a month. You got the debut of the Saturday show. You got the New Japan crossover, Forbidden Door show. You have All Out. You have All In. You have Full Gear. You have a video game. And a couple other things. You don't, we don't know what's... And, and you got a contract signing. You got a contract negotiation happening. You also have the, the, the looming digital presence for AEW content to, for there to be a hub. There's a lot of moving parts. And things need to fire. You can't misfire now. So long, in a long way, you, you should have CM Punk there. For sure. Does that help you? Does that help answer? It the does. I, I think what it comes yeah. down to is that if AEW could do this on their own, they probably would. But I think they get they benefit more out of it. And it, to me, it just solidifies that AEW or uh, Tony Khan can't really do this without CM Punk. I think. Listen, I I think short term they they would do they would do fine without him. But yes. you're not gonna you're not gonna become a million plus consistent every week. Yes. If if you don't have a CM Punk there. That's going to Correct. create the eyeballs and, and garner a lot of this. Listen, man, I, I, I thought, you know, I watched Rampage uh, and I thought it was a really good show. And I thought it was a good show because of the Moxley segment. I thought John Moxley's doing tremendous and I enjoyed it. I also think they had an unbelievable main event. You know, I, I absolutely love that main event, but Vikingo is not a Vic Vikingo. Is it doesn't really have a mainstream North American uh, presence. Same thing with Jolistico. It was for the AAA title. It was unbelievable. I think that's the point, right? And then you go back to the, the second show. The second show will be able to help highlight these guys. Of we course. We talked about the four pillars the other day and how they're not up there yet. But if they get more reps, they'll start to maybe, maybe get that star power put on them. If they, you know, and I think having that second show and because I did like that match, that uh, Vikingo match, it was really yeah. good. Yeah. It's just and he's outstanding. It's just getting getting eyeballs on him. Yeah, he, he's really he's really, really impressive. And he's young, you know, he's a young guy and he and I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to do this. But, you know, what what is that? What does that match mean to the audience that's watching? I to me it means a lot, but I don't know what it means to the general audience. So I think all of this helps, right? All of this will help, and I think that's the fun thing here. When we come back, I want to touch on this Twitch deal. I want to talk about that WWE has has set up a lot of negativity around this at first, and then it kind of changed the story. I want to talk about uh, Mercedes and New Japan and Stardom. Will she be a Forbidden Door? We got Backlash coming up. This card is building up. It's an interesting card. They're giving away Cody and Brock on this. So I, I think that's going to be the big, big match here. I don't think you're going to get anything bigger than that. And I'm curious if they do the John Cena treatment. Because apparently there was a lot of parallel on, on what happened when, when uh, the night after WrestleMania here for Cody. Also, uh, SmackDown results I want to talk about. But, you know, this is all fun stuff. I know I spent a lot of time on AEW here, but I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pivot a little bit. Well, AEW is the big story, you know what's going on there. We're gonna go to a quick break and come back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. Having a blast with you guys. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. You can follow everything I do essentially on there. And the Wrestling Observer. I'm everywhere now. It's too much. Way too much. I'm doing too much. Uh, stardom this early morning. Our producer, Matt, here. He fell asleep during it. I know he's been watching it as we're doing the show, actually. It was a really good show. I saw bits and pieces. I, I, I want to watch the, uh, the Tam Nakano and Julia in its entirety. I haven't seen the full thing yet, but a lot of people were surprised. The Tam Nakano defeated Julia. 
for the World of Stardom Championship. You also had Iwatami defeating Mercedes Monet, IWGP Women's Championship. Mercedes is going, uh, has agreed to do a contract extension with New Japan slash Stardom. Per Dave, our very own Dave Meltzer, he said that her next match will likely be in the United States. There's no details on the length of this. I, I'm curious if this leads to Forbidden Door. I really hope it does. Uh, that that's another cool piece to that to that AEW puzzle to, that you can put together, and you have a lot of dream matches there and possibilities. Uh, but I I really want to. Uh, th that Julia match was hard hitting. Holy mo! Did you watch any of it, Matt? I I gotta go back and watch it. I was very bummed I missed it. <laughs> okay. So I have yeah. I would I'm gonna I would definitely recommend if, if yeah. that you check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, very very good. Very cool stuff. I here. did see. I did see the my my Uitani, um that dragon suplex she she finished um, Mercedes with, um, is something Kenny would be jealous of. Yeah, Kenny Omega, because that thing was evil. It just looked nasty. So, uh, yeah, good stuff, man. They changed all the championships last night. Or, Very good or stuff this morning. So, mm, yeah. yeah. SmackDown from Friday, Judgment Day. Damian Priest and Finn Balor defeated the LWO. Rey Mysterio's Rey Mysterios. I made him Greek. Rey Mysterios. It's okay. You know what? I want to see a, a Greek Rey Mysterio. I'm into this. <laughs> Joining the Latino World Order. Uh, Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. Uh, this man. This went 11 and a half minutes. Selena Vega. Zelina Vega came out. And uh, she asked for a title shot of Backlash against Rhea Ripley. And later would be given it. So this is, she's going to get a nice pop in Puerto Rico. She had her slippers in her hand. Did you see that? Chanclada? Yeah. I've seen that. My <laughs> wife's family. I see that thing flying around the house regularly. The most devastating move in all of professional wrestling. Hit him with the slipper. Ricochet and Braun Strowman defeated the Viking Raiders. Ten minutes. They give these matches some time here. Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan defeated Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green to retain the titles. Intercontinental champion Gunther defeated Xavier Woods to retain the title. I like this match. I like Xavier in his singles matches. You know, a lot of speculation of Big E's coming back the last couple days. Have you seen that? I did. Um, I can tell you that I know he recently had his uh, checkup done, but yeah. he's still far off, I think. I don't mm -hmm. think he's quite there. Yeah, give him some time. A, don't that rush it. That was a serious it. injury. Yeah. Very serious. No, very, very serious injury. Very, very serious. Uh, it, and, it's, and it's nice that it's downplayed because he's okay right now, but it's scary. Very <laughs> scary. No DQ match. Solo Sokoa defeated Matt Riddle 14 minutes and four seconds. Sokoa wins with a flying Samoan spike. A lot of parallel comparison to Umaga with how they're presenting him. Dude, he's Every good. Every day it seems like he's more. Listen, you know, he's, he's John, John Suncast, our producer in the last segment, was asking, you know, how do you, how do you create a star? What can Tony do? WWE is doing it on this end. You know, that you're seeing these stars getting created. And it's very interesting to see it happen. Gunther won. Solo Sokoa, too. Uh, you know, if they give L.A. Knight some, a nice little push, you could do something with L.A. Knight. You got Cody, obviously. Austin Theory is going to be a big name for them. Bronson Reed is getting some TV time. A lot of, lot of interesting different names here. Things are changing. You know, you got that big boom of talent in the mid-2010s. With the Seth Rollins and the Dean Ambrose and obviously, uh, you know, Roman Reigns. All the talent that they brought through NXT. And now this is the next run. This is the next generation of the talent. It, it is cool to see. It is cool to see how they piece these things together. And it's amazing because, you know, when, I, when the Shield debuted, do you remember the criticism that they got? That... Everybody knew that Roman would be the guy, right? And the fear was that Seth would fall apart, right? Isn't that interesting? And they were like, well, Seth may not get over. Uh, John Moxley, Dean Ambrose may not get over because he's, you know, Moxley's a big name because of the indies. But, you know, uh, 
Seth is a good worker, but not a good promo. The dude is the biggest star in the company. The top five. It's interesting how things change. Sometimes you get comfortable. The talent gets comfortable and they do something cool. I, I'm liking the next group of, you know, young talent coming up. They're doing a good job here. Let's look at the backlash card. Go ahead. I, I was going to say real quick. You and mm -hmm. I uh, discussed this last week about um, Solo Sokoa and he might be the guy. He And we just said it last week. We threw it out in the world. That, hey, maybe that's the guy that ends up taking it off his own cousin. That would be cool. Listen, that would be cool. Would be, you could do something that, unique that there. That would be a heck of a way to, because he, he looks the part. Somebody I, brought I up. I do not want to get caught in a, in a bar in a, in a bar fight across from him. I, I just got that. a message. I'm, I'm getting yelled at. You forgot Montez Ford. No, I, I, Montez Ford is definitely going to be a big star in that company. It's just a matter of when they do it and what kind of program they put him in to really push him. I, I very much like Montez. I think they could do something very unique with him. He has a great crossover audience, too. You know, a younger audience. He gets it. His wife's a big star. They did that thing with Kevin Hart, if you saw. Very cool stuff. Let's look at this backlash card here. Taking place in Puerto Rico in a couple of weeks. First time in Puerto Rico since for many, many years. What was it? 2005, 6, 7, 8? I can look it up. It's something like that, though. When, uh, when uh, uh, Lita got very hurt at that, she busted up her knees at that show. You got the Usos and Solo Sokoa. Versus Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle. All right, cool. Riddle's in the in the in the you know the middle of this. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. I you know what my problem with Matt Riddle is he needs to put on shoes. <laughs> I know that that's his thing, but I, I he needs to put on boots. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. I saw a video. On YouTube, and it was drawn a comparison. Very, I mean, it was almost identical to John losing at WrestleMania to Cody losing at WrestleMania. And the next day, Brock Lesnar coming out and destroying him. And you know that that was a hot program. Whether you do one match or two matches, or however you do this, I think this is this is very important. You make this work for Cody. And you don't make him look like a jabroni. <laughs> but it's a very unique match that we have not seen before. It's a By crossover way, generational um, match, which I, I think it's smart to do. Real quick, uh, New Year's Revolution uh, 2005 is the last time I've been in Puerto Rico. Revolution, not resolution, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2005. Okay, so I, I was close. Look, I said 2005. Look at that. The memory is right. holding up. Right. Good for you. The holes in my wrestling memory is probably after Benoit to the pipe bomb. Like, I have a lot of holes. There was a lot of weird main events around that time frame. A lot of strange matchups. Well, th th that's probably my worst of. Like, my when I talk about, like, my, my lack of pro wrestling interest, I lost a ton of interest in that time frame. And then it came back. You know, a couple of years, and I got the bug again. You got the United States title on the line. Austin Theory defends against Bronson Reed and Bobby Lashley. SmackDown Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley defending against Zelina Vega. Obviously, Zelina's going to be the big hometown baby face here. Even though she's from New York. Seth Rollins. I think she's from Flushing. Is she from Flushing? I think she's from my, my neck of the woods. Uh, I think she's very close to you, actually. Yeah. yeah. And so is Rebby. I think Rebby Hardy is is from my uh my area too. This actually there's a lot of people in wrestling. Uh uh Matt Stryker, he's from Bayside. He taught at Cardoza High School, my former high school. <laughs> a lot of a lot of pro wrestling connections here. Pat Buck, he's from Queens. A lot of uh pro wrestling happens here. Uh we all we got uh, Rhea Ripley against Alina Vega, Seth Rollins versus Omos. That was randomly announced on SmackDown. I am I the you know this Omos stuff. I I thought the Brock Lesnar match was was I was wrong on that. I I hope I'm wrong about this too, but I I'm not interested in this. Are you? I I I I am like I don't know what to, how to feel about this because I'm like I looked at it. I was like wait. Neither of these guys um, perform regularly on SmackDown at all. 
and they just randomly announced this match on SmackDown, two Raw guys, and there's been no buildup. So I guess it, this is similar to how a UFC would put a fight together, right? They would say, yeah. hey, here's the fight. It's based on rankings and whatever, and then it's up to the fighters to promote the fight. To promote it. So I, I, I guess know. that's I, what we're doing here. All right, well, we'll I see what know. happens with this. I think it's a weird matchup for sure, but we'll, we'll get to something, I'm sure, uh, eventually. Uh, there was a story that came out on Wednesday. WWE reached a deal to allow talent back on Twitch. Revenue earnings will be split three ways between WWE, the talent, and Twitch. And the talent and Twitch receive most of what is generated is being reported. Also, the talent get a bigger cut than a, a regular Twitch streamer would. A high-tier Twitch streamer would. So. WWE negotiated it. Uh, I, I spoke to somebody about this, and apparently, talent, talent. This is very talent friendly. That's what I, that that those were the words that were used. This is very talent friendly for them. I noticed a bunch of them jumped back on this week. Like Dakota Kai is back, and I know there's others that probably will come back and even start now because they can do this. Are, are they and using? What I, and what name are they using? The whatever whatever handle they had. They don't necessarily have to be there. It can be whatever handle. Some of them were before they even were with WWE. I think uh, Dakota's Charlie Girl or something, which is the, yeah. But is she the, saying she's Dakota name. Kai when she's talk like is she, you know, or is she just um, I haven't whoever watched she is? Any of her stuff, so I don't know. All right, I'm sure, curious about this. Yeah, yeah. I'll 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 see if I can find one of her streams and check it out. I'm sure somebody does. Yeah, um, the switch yeah. is going to be good for them for sure. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a positive here. So I don't see that. Also, uh, Warner Media, uh, I, 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 being interested in WWE, I, I think that story that came out is a little, uh, it was a little bit more speculation than anything else. I'll say that. I, I think it was Sounds a little like bit more. to a broad question. Of yeah, it, it is a broad that. question, <laughs> but uh, would they be interested? Of course, how could you not be? How could you not be interested in a really big product? Uh, that get that gets m millions of viewers. How could you not be interested? But are they are they, you know, actually interested? I I don't think it's a reality. I'll just say it that way. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final segment coming up. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show here on Sports Byline. Getting a lot of feedback about my turning Rey Mysterio Greek. I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're going to come up with new gimmicks for everybody. <laughs> we got French Tony Khan that calls into Matt Men every week now. It's crazy. That guy's nuts. If you haven't checked it out, I don't know. He calls with some wacky ideas. I don't know what's going on there. Very interesting stuff. So, Matt, out of all the stuff that happened this week, what was the biggest story for you? Um, well, because it's fresh in my mind. Well, there's two. One is the... um, uh. MJF and that they actually had a, a match on Dynamite that ended in a DQ or a count out. Count I guess. out, yeah. Uh, or and which they haven't done before, so that was that was interesting. And then um, the Stardom show with all the titles changing, I thought was interesting. So um, yeah, so they seem to be resetting things there. I would love to see um, a U.S. promotion try that more because that's I'm trying to think, when was the last time we the saw past. that when was the last time we saw all the, titles all the titles change in one night you know in a paper in a, on a pay-per-view or whatever i i can't in a u.s promotion yeah because i think new japan did it in dominion like two years ago three years ago new japan did it but i don't remember it happening um in a uh u.s promotion yeah i i don't i, I don't remember either I know that they did that WCW reset, but that, that, I'm not counting that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not going back that far. <laughs> I think we've had multiple title changes. I just don't know if everything has changed. I also think that we have way too many titles in the U.S. Way too many titles, guys. We're wrapping it up here. We'll be back next week with another Sunday edition of Wrestling Observer Live. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. We'll see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>